Now let's see how to integrate Firebase with our Flutter app. And to do so, we're going to need to head to our Firebase console and select Add App. We're going to start with iOS. So we'll choose this iOS icon. And first we want to register our app by creating an iOS bundle ID. And so usually the way that I create my bundle IDs is to say com dot my name dot the name of the app. And then we can just say register app after that. Then we'll be given a config file that Firebase has created for us, which is used to recognize our Firebase project. And we just want to download this into a place like our downloads folder or our desktop. We're going to bring it into our iOS folder. And we're going to do that by opening up the application Xcode. So you should have Xcode installed. That's a prerequisite to getting Flutter up and running correctly. And once that's opened, we just want to select in the opening modal, open another project. And from there, we'll choose our project within it, the iOS folder, and then select open. The first thing that we want to do is when we have the this runner folder selected, we want to update the name of our bundle identifier. So it may say com.example.whatever. We want to change that to what we provided as the bundle ID for Firebase. And next, we want to add this plist file directly within runner. So we'll take it from whatever folder we downloaded it into and bring it directly into runner, just like this. And when you see this pop up, choose options for adding these files. You want to add to target runner and then select finish. And then you should see your Google service dash info plist file show up there. So at this point, we're done using Xcode so we can close this out. However, we need to do one more thing within our iOS folder, and that is to open up our runner file and go to info.plist and you'll want to scroll down to this area right here where you see CF bundle URL schemes. Beneath it we want to change this string value to our reverse client ID that's located within Google service info.plist. So we can copy the string reverse client ID that should be between these string tags then head back to info.plist and paste that in. And when that's done, that should be enough for the iOS integration of Firebase with our app. We can just save info.plist. And to set up Android, to integrate Android, we can head back to our console, close out of the iOS integration steps, select Add App again, and now we want to choose the Android icon. We'll register the app with the same package name, with the same bundle ID, And then you'll see here that we have this option to include a signing certificate known as a SHA-1. And you'll see underneath that this is required for dynamic links, invites, and Google sign-in. So since we're integrating our app with Google sign-in, we'll need to include this SHA-1. So to get that, just hover over this question mark tooltip and click on see this page. And to get our SHA-1, you'll need to run a command in your terminal. There's a different command for Mac and Linux versus Windows, so select the appropriate one for you. And we can just copy this command and run it in our terminal. And when we do, we'll be asked for a key store password, and the default password here is Android. So just type in Android, and you'll be given a few fingerprints, a SHA-1 as well as a SHA-256. I'd recommend including both of these values but for right now, we're just going to copy this SHA-1 value and head back to our Firebase Android setup and paste that in to the SHA-1 input. And then select Register App. And we'll download the config file that it gives us. So this JSON file, googleservices.json, can be added to the folder instead of iOS Android and we need to put it within app, like you see here. So once again, we'll download it and move it into our project folder within Android and then within app. And once that's been added, we need to update another file just like we did for iOS. We need to head to this build.gradle file 
that is located within the app folder, you'll head to the area default config and you'll need to change the application ID to whatever yours is. And when that's done, once again, we'll save. And I would personally recommend back within Firebase adding the SHA-256 fingerprint. So to do that, we'll head to our console, select the Android integration that we just went through, click on the gear button, and then we can head down to the bottom where we see our package name our, and this area for our SHA certificate fingerprints. See that we've already added our SHA-1. We can add another. If we select add fingerprint and we can just head back to our terminal and copy the SHA-256. Paste that in. It automatically recognizes it as such and we can save that. And with that done, we have Firebase integrated with our app. We should be good to go for working with our database, all of our different services, as well as Google sign in for our authentication. So first let's move on to authentication and how we're going to sign in users to our app. Note that when you run your project to see that everything is working successfully, you got Flutter integrated successfully with the Firebase, you should see a few lines in your debug console like this that say, you know, that include this cryptic string and then say connected path, path is satisfied. So this is basically Flutter just connecting with Firebase. And if you're getting the error saying, your bundle ID isn't set correctly, like you see here. You likely forgot that step for using Xcode and including the bundle ID for your runner folder. So again, when you've got everything set up successfully, we're ready to move on to the next step.